um, commerce and arts uh, second year. Okay. And what colour will you be writing with? And what's your uh, slogan? Kelly Green and Ward for Board. Um, let's look at your policy statement to begin with. Yep. What would you say your primary policy is? Well, I guess I'd say my primary policies are threefold. So there's three main issues that I'm focusing on. Uh, first is the environment. So I believe the union can be a lot more sustainable in its practices. This is worst, uh, sourcing it from energy, from ethical sources, you know, not from fossil fuels. But it's also on the ground things, so it's providing allergy um, options for those who, you know, say can't eat gluten. Um, but also providing uh, more jobs on campus um, for people, you know, particularly from lower socio economic backgrounds. You know, these are the sort of people who traditionally the union disadvantages. Um, it's also uh, providing more sustainability. Um, in terms of, you know, community garden initiatives and things like that. The second is international students. So this kind of ties into what I said previously about, you know, the union up to now has represented a particular sort of student. We all sort of see them around, they get involved, and that's really good to see. But some students are left on the periphery of that. So this is a case of people from ethnic backgrounds, people from lower socioeconomic but as my focus is, is international students. Now, why, you might ask? Well, I've been uh, involved with international students over the last year as president of Unimates, which is a society that helps to incorporate international students into the wider university community. Through that interaction, I've basically seen how a lot of them, you know, aren't very interested in the union, they don't get involved, and they're away from their traditional support networks. Now, this is a very core part of what the union's meant to be doing, providing services that, you know, helps them to, you know, feel at home, you know, to make friends, and that's really important. So, what I'm proposing is things like a dedicated spot on board for international students. They do make up 20% of the university student body. And also by uh, allowing them through, you know, more encouragement through ISL to run for board. Now, ISL, unknown to a lot of domestic students, actually does a lot of work through, you know, city tours. They organise discussion groups. Sorry, this is that the international? International, sorry, international student lounge. Um, yeah, I speak in acronyms <laughs> a lot, but um, international student lounge. It does do a lot for them, but they need to, you know, become more aware of the, you know, what the union can provide, um, and. Many of them only come for one year, two years, and really there isn't mechanisms in place for them to become part of the union. The third option is also what I've been involved with is clubs and societies. Now, I've seen clubs and societies, particularly startup ones, really feel the pinch when it comes to financial pressures. Um, you know, often when you want to run an event, sometimes you need to put up, you know, $1,000 $1,500. This is something that, you know, not many students have access to, and if they gave that up, particularly if they're from, you know, a struggling background and they need that to pay for rent, they're not able to put that up themselves. Now, of course, they get reimbursed by the current system, but that only works so much, and in that intermittent, you know, one week, two weeks where they don't have that money, they can't, you know, function. So therefore, what happens? They don't put up the money, and these small clubs, the majority of the 200 clubs are small clubs, you know, under 100 members, which still do a lot of things to improve the diversity of the union, but they can't really hold any other events apart from a bar tab. Now, I like drinking as much as, you know, any other university student, but we want to see more diversity, not only amongst the students that the union represents, but also amongst uh, the events that is held on campus so that we get a more inclusive union, which ultimately is what the constitution of the union states, that it should be inclusive for all students, representing everyone. Okay, cool. Um, are you a member of a political party? Um, 
Not in the federal sense, but um, I make no secret that I am a member of the Greens on campus, um, which, you know, has some links to the political party. I'm not hiding away from that, as uh, other candidates would be, because what I see as with my three policies is they are uh, left policies um, in terms of, you know, the clubs and societies supporting smaller clubs, not bigger clubs, uh, international students, not just international students, but other disenfranchised students like ethnic, Aboriginal, Torres Strait Islander, uh, lower socioeconomic backgrounds, women, all these ones. And then also the environment is, you know, quite obviously and, you know, given the fact that my T-shirt is green. So um, <laughs> I make no secret of that. Um, I don't so think... So you describe yourself as a left-wing character? Yeah, I would, I, would, I would not say, like, that's something that people should shy away from because, you know, the union has potential to really represent students. And when you're representing them, you know, you can't be apolitical in that because, you know... It's not apolitical. It's intensely representing our interests as a body to the university, to other student organisations. And so, you know, I feel it's important for, you know, a full disclosure on that rather than just, you know, a simple thing of, you know, more party, you know, a good service in providing friendship connections and that. But you need to um, expand beyond that. So do you think that the union should be a political body? It's, it's not so much like, I wouldn't say need to be a political body, I would say it already is a political body. I would say that up till now, um, many candidates have sort of run on this kind of, oh, you know, more bars or more food and, you know, this sort of thing. But I think, like, inherently in the fact that this is an election, people are elected based on different promises of what they will strive for, different goals they will strive for, that makes it a political body. Now, it's not in the same way that the SRC is, which is, you know, a lobbying group, so um, more intensely political, but it still is in that it's representing students on campus and their views and what changes they would like to see. Last year's um, most left-wing candidate and another member of grassroots, Tom Rowley, who's on board at the moment, suggested at the time of the strike that the USU shut down its entire operations on that day, which would cost the union a whole lot of money. If you were in a similar situation, would you support uh, economic costs to the union in favour of a more long-term I think it's important, as you say there, to focus on the social initiatives. Now, in recent times, we've seen the union prioritise itself as a business, but we've got to remember when it was set up in its initial stages, it was set up for students, for diversity, for enriching that student experience. And what's really important there is um, a connection with other student organisations because we're all in the same boat. It kind of comes back to the SAF funding, which is, you know, it's not guaranteed. We need to negotiate with each other to access that funding and it's not it shouldn't just be limited to those SAF negotiations it's got to be a broad ranging because we're all students now obviously I do have my issues with SAF funding given that um, SUSF the sport and fitness which isn't even run by a student and continually run towards elite athletes um, doesn't seem to be much of a student organization and yet receives the majority of the SAF funding but I think it's important for the rest of us, the union, the SRC, Supra, all these other student organisations to, you know, back each other because, you know, we're all in the same boat. We're so all students. So you would have supported a total shutdown of union operations? Yes, because I think it was important to, you know, make it clear to the university that we're all students because otherwise they turn us on each other. And when they turn us on each other, you get a situation like happens in other universities. I remember in UTS, I was campaigning there for SRC last year, and, you know, even on a Wednesday, where, you know, Wednesday here at UCID is, you know, thriving, you know, lots of people on campus, lots of events, there it was just dead because all their student organisations have had, you know, the life ripped out of them because, you know, there was lots of internal fighting and not enough focusing on what is you know, 
their broad mantra of we are for students, we are for diversity, and you know we want to support all students. Um, so looking at your policies in a little bit more detail, mm -hmm. you're obviously for ethical products at USU Outlet. Absolutely. But you've also said that it's important to maintain access to low socioeconomic students. Yeah. If ethical products were a higher price, would you still support them even if that meant that it was less accessible to some students? Well, I think this is where, like, this comes into the negotiation step when getting those ethical products. So this is where the access discounts really need to play their part and really provide a floor for, you know, students from lower socioeconomic backgrounds to get those products. Now, it's great that we've got um, sustainable coffee at the moment, but we can expand that to more products. Now, obviously, there, there may be higher costs, but that can be taken into account by the union, you know, restructuring, understanding that this is not just to make a profit. They can, a lot of their business, particularly if we see the foods that are currently on sale, they're um, a considerable markup from what you may buy just down at Coles at Broadway. So there is obviously profit making going on, but what it needs to get back to is a for students idea that, you know, the union has had its pressures since voluntary student unionism came in. Um, I'm not denying that, I'm, you know, it has been forced to, you know, turn towards profit. But I would say it's gone too far towards that. It needs to get back to that core value of it's a student-run organisation, it's for students, and it shouldn't be for anyone else. You know, it's reminding the CEO that he works for us, not we work for him. So you'd be prepared to have a, a lower profit margin at USC outlets? even given there's some uncertainty as to the continued staff payment? Yes, even despite that, we need to prioritise students first because if we prioritise students and push towards, say, a free access model that can get all students involved, then you, if you've got everyone spending a little bit of money at the union, then that will provide you know, financial sustainability over the future. Now, obviously I know it's not going to get to free access anytime soon. That would be a $3 million black hole for the union for them to fill if they were to introduce that. But bringing it on, you know, gradual levels. So things like free access to lower socioeconomic backgrounds or one that I'm specifically pushing, free access for international students. Now, this is in the context... Now, some people might say it's, you know, pandering... But what I would say is international students spend over $12,000 a semester to come here and then they're faced with extra costs to join the union. That is why, like, a lot of them just don't. I've seen with uni mates, when we have our events, now most society events have about, you know, 80 to 90% of the people attending access card holders. When we have our events, it's only about 40 to 50%. Now, sure, they pay that little higher price for not being members of the union, but they just don't feel it's worth it to get the access card for one year if they're doing a master's, you know, and they're paying so much to begin with. You've got to make the union more accessible to all students, not just, you know, the students who currently benefit from the union. I mean, I've benefited greatly from the union. I've made a lot of good connections and friendships from that but it needs to be expanded so all students can get involved. And I think if all students can get involved, then you're solving those financial issues that you may have. So are you proposing affirmative action for international students? That is, it is exactly what I'm proposing for international students. Um, the format this would take, um, I would see it as a dedicated spot on board for international students, given they are 20% of the union and yet still grossly underrepresented by the union. Obviously, the ideal situation would be where I don't have to stand up for international students, that they would be able to have the resources, have the time, have the financial in, you know, ability to be able to run for board themselves. This could be done. It could be done through International Student Lounge. They have a huge reach to international students who no one else would.
This could also bring in the university function of the international office, which has you know, newsletters that it sends out to every single international student. If it can mobilise that, then I think there's no reason why there wouldn't be candidates willing to step up to the position, but it needs to be open to them. It needs to be made easier for them to do so. But do you really think it's appropriate that there be a dedicated international student spot when, as you've said yourself, not many international students are actually part of the UN's membership? But I think that, that it's kind of a cyclical argument, isn't it? Because what the point is, is why are they not members of the union? Because they don't feel invited by the union. They don't feel involved in the union. The union hasn't, as such, provided... Now, ISL is great. It does a lot of things, but it doesn't breach further. It just reaches that sort of, you know, sort of surface level. It needs to go deeper to encourage all international students to really participate. Once they participate, then there's incentive and reason and rationale for them to have a dedicated spot on union. But this is also not just for them. There's also things like AA brought in for, you know, people from lower socioeconomic backgrounds, maybe from people from ethnic backgrounds now. Is this all for union board? All for a union board. Now, obviously, where, where you draw the line, yes, as I say, where you draw the line is an issue because, you know, otherwise you are getting one from each different, you know, segment of the student body, in which case it ceases to be election. Where you draw that line, I don't know. But you still need to make it a fairer process so that people don't feel shy away from running from union board because, as we can see, and as we saw from the last elections, you know, apart from, you know, a couple of candidates, people like, you know, Tom Rowley, who ran on a very different platform. The rest of them run on very similar platforms that only represent a very specific sect of the union, and they really shouldn't be targeting just that sect. It should be everyone. Um, and so on that affirmative action policy, just to clarify, would it be one international student elected per election cycle, or would it be one on any board at one time? Well, like, I mean... Obviously, I would push for um, as much representation as I could get. Um, I envision, like, one international student per election cycle. If that was deemed unfeasible by the board, and I'm under no disillusion that I would be against some stiff opposition because you're challenging other people's, you know, desires to get onto board, but if I could at least get, you know, one per board that would still be good because if you think about it, you know, 20% of the student body, if you think in terms of proportional terms, they should have, you know, two out of the 11, you know, or that's almost, you know, the 20% that makes up the student body. Uh, let's talk about transparency and the union. Mm. When do you think that it's appropriate that board meetings go in camera? I don't think it's ever appropriate for them to go in camera. I think the thing like the SRC, how it has it as very open meetings, you know, very publicly disclosed, it should always be like that because the union is for our students and for us as members, uh, those of us, not only those of us who are members, but also all students. Because even if you're not a member of the union, you are still affected by decisions it makes, whether you purchase products on campus or things like that. And so because of that, it always needs to be fully transparent. I don't think, you know, this idea of, you know, issues being too sensitive for them that they have to go in camera. What about commercial confidence? I don't think that comes into it. I think that commercial confidence, it represents how the union has twisted itself to sort of see itself as a business now. Now, sure, it has profit-making enterprises, but it still needs to focus on what is the benefit of the students. And it's not democratic, it's not transparent, it's not fair for us as members for some discussions to be enclosed and then for them to say, oh, look, the union has made a decision and this represents, you know, all of the union. It clearly doesn't. The union was set up as a debating society 
and yet there seems very limited options for debate. It, now it's like the union has to present a front, and this is what all of the union represents. And it never is going to do that. We want to encourage open debate. We want to encourage open discussion so that you know, all viewpoints are represented. So you said that you'd oppose moving in camera for, say, commercial confidence. Would that also apply when the board was discussing, say, its relationship with a particular employee? I, I think so, because I think, like, although it needs to be dealt with sensitively, because, you know, you don't want anyone to get hurt, but you still want that transparency that the student body who then elects the board to then feel that their decisions are being taken into account, that you know their views are taken into account. As soon as you move things in camera, then you start getting issues of people thinking, well, I'm not going to get involved with the union because you know the union doesn't really represent the, me. It just does everything behind closed doors. You know, what's in it for me? And we've seen that through you know voting turnouts. Last year, it was only about four to five thousand votes cast, and although that's a significant enough percentage of members, 13,000 USU members, given that anyone in the university can vote, both students and staff, which is over 55,000, that's not good enough. So really, if you look at that proportion, that's really poor. Why is that? Because people don't feel interested in the union. We need to create an atmosphere where people are involved with the union, where they're interested in what happens with it. And that's why I don't think in-camera is a good way to go. Um, do you believe that the union should have Senate-appointed directors? I don't feel like the current system with the Senate-appointed directors, now obviously they are part of the union and they're not part of the Senate, I understand that, but I don't feel that they should be part of a student-run organisation. Because whether we like it or not, the fact the Senate has appointed them shows that they're there to promote interests that you know, vaguely align with the Senate and not students. It's a student-run organisation. It shouldn't just be a you know, majority-run student organisation. It needs to be a fully student-run organisation. And I think that's only achieved when it is a student board, a completely student board, because that will also affect how we deal with the CEO. As we've seen in recent times, the CEO has generally sort of acted of his own initiative and sort of brought people into line. Now, I can't comment on whether he's used the Senate-appointed direct, um, directors specifically, but I imagine that given that they both come from fairly corporate commercial backgrounds, they would feed into those same interests. It needs to be student-run so it keeps the CEO and the rest of the USU accountable to students. Okay. Um, you said that you think it's unjust that international students be expected to pay full price of access cards, especially when many are only here for a semester. Hmm. Isn't there already a semester-long access card that is available to international it students? It is, but it is still grossly expensive. Um, like even considering $70, $80 for that semester is still not good enough. It needs to be free. Now, not just for study abroad and exchange, which is what I'm referring to there, but also for you know students who are here for a short time. Many of the students that I've met have been here for their masters, which is one, two years. They're not here for long. They don't have much time. They're very stressed about their studies. You need those support networks, and that can be what the union can provide. But if the union is making itself inaccessible to those students, then they're not going to. Um, and just to finish up, mm -hmm. uh, who would you be likely to vote for for president? And what other, who, which other candidates do you support in this election? Um, so in terms of president, I mean, it's, it's no lie that Tom Rowley is my you know, campaign manager. So obviously, should he choose to run, I would be fully supporting him. Um, his values very much align with me, indeed, that he had some environment policies when he was running for board, um, and he's been you know, a tre tremendous uh, inspiration for me um, in running. So, what did you make of him being essential last year? 
I was very disappointed with him being censured because when he was censured last year, it once again reiterated my earlier point that the union is trying to present a front. It needs to go back to that. You know, this is 1800s when it was set up, that it was set up as a debating society. It needs to encourage debate and foster debate. Um, when they censured him like that, like, it was painful to see the fact that he couldn't speak out about things. And, you know, he's, as you know, he's very, you know, active, you know, in his political mind and that he couldn't express those views is very sad. And it shows that his constituency that put him on board as the second place person to get on board wasn't being represented. Rather, this union front was being represented. So you don't think that board directors owe a duty to the union to support it publicly? I don't think, I don't think it's a case of you know, negatively affecting the USU. But I think it's a case of that debate should be encouraged. I think board directors shouldn't have this sort of binding resolution that, you know, we'll all present this viewpoint and we'll all agree with this viewpoint on, you know, every different issue. Like, they come from various different political backgrounds. We've seen that with candidates do come from different backgrounds and supported by different political blocks. This is just a fact of any election. So... Why should we expect that they're all going to agree on a certain issue when they're all from different sides of the political spectrum? In terms of who I'd also, um, you know, find good as another candidate um, of the current candidates, um, I would say Bibi uh, D'Souza, who I um, got to know through the JAM and Grassroots SRC campaign last year, um, she is one I would most identify with. She also understands the need for the board to uh, and the union in general to be more accessible to students from, you know, queer backgrounds, uh, you know, ethnic backgrounds, lower socioeconomic, international student backgrounds, all these different backgrounds to provide more diversity in not only who runs for board but who participates in the union and who ultimately benefits from the union. Are there any other candidates you support? Um, apart from that, I would also say um, Jeremy Elphick. Um, as a, a close friend of mine, he um, also shares many uh, left-leaning values, and so I would say he would also be a good candidate uh, should he get elected. Okay, great. Thank you for your time. No problem.